So you want to build some muscle and you've tried all the diets and workouts online, but you still can't see results. Well, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know from the science of muscle building, the workouts and the reps, to the food to eat and why. Most importantly, how to stay consistent with it. A common misconception when it comes to muscle is that it turns into fat and vice versa. Uy, ang tigas na ng taba ko, oh. My fat is finally turning into muscle. Sometimes when we build muscle, we also tend to lose fat, which might make it seem that way, but they are made up of entirely different tissue. Muscle is one form of tissue in our body, and you have your cardiac, smooth, and skeletal muscle, which has the ability to contract and help us with movement. When we talk about building muscle, we're usually referring to building up the strength and size of these muscle fibers. The process of building muscle is similar to a game of Jenga or Uno Stacko. Every block that you take out is a workout where you challenge and tear the muscle. Now, when we place the block on top, this is recovery. Even though there are tears already in the rest of the tower, we are building a stronger and bigger tower. If you don't rest well and properly, the tower will be at risk. Stability of the tower represents your consistency and foundation to help build muscle. Now, of course, the process is all about repeat, 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 and building your consistency. And of course, with an intense game like this, ooh, you need to be patient. Taking your time with every single block, until you're able to build a steady tower. Oh no. The first step to building muscle is to tear the muscle. And that would come from resistance training. I do resistance training all the time. I resist training. Now I am a dietitian and not a fitness trainer, although we'll see in the future. Hey guys, my name is Elijah. I'm a personal trainer and a doctor. We're gonna talk about muscles. When it comes to resistance training, the types of workout you'd want to focus on are compound movements that hit at least three to four muscle groups, making it more efficient to build muscle. Exercises like squats, lunges, deadlifts, hip thrusts, push-ups and chest presses, rows, shoulder press, and pull-ups. You can then move to the single muscle group exercises, such as your bicep curls, your triceps, your leg extensions, and your hamstring curls. Online, you will see a lot of exercises that are a bit complicated. They're trying to mix it up, which of course is fun, and I used to do that too. But it's also important to remember that the basics are the core of your muscle building. Cardio is not bad, although I tend to skip it on most days. It has a lot of benefits for heart health, stamina, endurance, and so much more. But when it comes to muscle building, it can help build muscles for beginners, but it is inefficient and it can hinder you from your gains. Oh, I'm so sweaty. The general guide for reps and sets for efficient muscle building would be three to four sets of six to 12 reps. You would want to hit each muscle group twice per workout, twice a week. If you were doing a full body split, hitting the gym two to three times a week would be perfect to efficiently build muscle. So right now I'm trying to fit at least two full body workouts per week. Resistance training is all about the routines, but over time you hit a plateau when your muscles have adapted to the stress you're giving it. One of the great things about training is there are always ways to improve and grow. You can add a weight, you can add a rep, you can add a set, you can decrease your rest, because you have to challenge yourself if you want to grow, even though I hate doing that. <laughs> this is called progressive overload, where we challenge our muscles when they have adapted to the stress to get out of plateaus and continue to build muscle. Okay, this is all really great information, but what if I don't want to build muscle because I don't want to be bulky? For a lot of people, building muscle is actually going to give you that lean and toned look that we tend to go for. Having abs usually comes from building your abdominal muscles, and those cuts in your arms usually comes from building your shoulders, your triceps, and your biceps. But building muscle is so much more than looking lean and toned or even having abs. Muscles play so many important roles in our day-to-day -day life, one being longevity. Strong muscles support your joints, improve balance, prevent falls, overall contributing to a higher quality of life as we age. Building muscle also offers you strength. 
allowing you to do everyday tasks with more ease, like carrying your groceries or carrying a big bottle of water. Although just because you have muscle doesn't always mean you're strong because there is a certain way to train where it's just building your muscle and not necessarily increasing your strength, but that's another topic for another video. And another thing that tends to be a selling point for a lot of people is the improvement in your metabolism. Muscle is known as active tissue. It burns more calories at rest compared to the other tissues, increasing your resting metabolic rate. And this is very helpful for weight management, glucose sensitivity, and reducing risk of other health diseases. As you get older, the biggest contributor to your metabolism slowing down is the loss of muscle mass. Lifting weights and building muscle goes beyond aesthetics. It goes into protecting and taking care of your health long term. Once you have destroyed your tissues from a workout, the next step is to repair them. And that usually comes from food. I've got my lunch. We have some roasted chicken, fave, little coleslaw, and of course, some rice. When it comes to recovery, food is fuel. And if you're not eating enough, sometimes your body starts to tap into your muscle stores as fuel. When it comes to the amount of food you're eating, it also depends on the overall goal. When we wanna build muscle, we often go on what is called a calorie surplus. And this is eating more than what your body needs in a day so that your body can use that extra energy for repair and building of muscles. Now, if you wanna lose fat, we usually go on a calorie deficit, which is eating a bit less than your body needs in a day so that you can now tap in to your stored energy, AKA your fat stored. We'll talk more about the science of fat loss in another video, so don't forget to subscribe. As you go on your journey, there will be phases where you may have to eat a bit more to help you build muscle so that you can see more progress. Personally, I struggled so much to build muscle when I was going through my disordered eating phases because I was so afraid to eat, thereby not fueling my muscles to grow. But wait a minute, can you build muscle and lose fat at the same time? Yes and no. See, the process for building muscle and losing fat, they're kind of counterintuitive to each other. Though it is still a possibility, it would probably take more time to see progress when you're trying to do both at the same time. However, there are groups of people where this whole task would be easier for, and that would be for beginners, because there's a lot of progress that they would have to make, those who have a higher body fat percentage, as they have more stored fat to mobilize, and detrained athletes, because now they have to build back the progress that they may have lost. In short, you do not want to be consistently under eating if you really want to build muscle. We can't be afraid to eat food, although it did take me a while to get over that fear. If you're going on a calorie surplus, this would be about 200 to 300 calories above maintenance. And if you're gonna go on a deficit, then I would go no more than 200 to 300 calories below maintenance. Now, of course, it is possible to gain muscle and lose fat without tracking every single calorie. But when it comes to muscle building, the main focus would just be not to miss any meals and snacks to make sure that you're not under fueling and checking in with your energy and your performance to know if you're eating enough. Hey, what's up? It's your boy, Joe Bro. And today we're gonna talk about how to build muscle. In the kitchen, the most important thing that you have to think about is protein. It's all about the protein. Protein is something the gym bros love and for good reason. First off, protein is a macronutrient that breaks down into what is called amino acids. And amino acids are the building blocks for muscles and other tissues in the body. But of course, we're not saying to just eat protein either. We can't forget the role of carbohydrates when it comes to energizing us and fueling our performance and the role of fat when it comes to absorbing nutrients and also hormonal balance. And of course, the role of fiber, blood sugar, blood pressure, blood cholesterol, satiety, gut health, and so much more. While protein is important for muscle building, it doesn't mean you should eat only protein. For a sedentary individual, the recommended protein intake is 0.8 to one gram of protein per kilogram of body weight. Now, if you're a little bit more active or you're trying to build some muscle, then your protein requirements would be 1.2 to 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. Usually I would go on the sweet spot of 1.6 grams per kilogram body weight. To paint an 
even better picture about the importance of protein when building muscle. There was a study that showed that individuals who ate at a calorie deficit while still maintaining the right amount of protein were able to maintain their muscle mass through this deficit. And usually when you go in a deficit, you run the risk of losing muscle mass when you're not fueling enough. But trust me, you don't have to be making chicken breast smoothies for you to build muscle. Let's talk about those sources of protein. 30 grams of chicken breast offers around nine grams of protein. One half cup of beans can give us about seven grams of protein, which varies slightly depending on the bean. A cup of milk can give us about eight grams of protein, two medium eggs offers about 12 grams of protein, and a can of tuna can give us around 32 grams of protein. Not to mention there are other food sources that also contain protein, like rice, potatoes, and bread. When it comes to muscle building, it's usually recommended to spread out your protein intake throughout the day of maybe 20 to 30 grams every three to four hours. Okay, before we go to the next one, I have to make a matcha. this new thing that I saw on TikTok where you cold whisk your matcha instead of hot water and the powder, you do it with the milk. It looks really good. Building muscle is about tearing it and then letting it recover and build stronger and better. And with that, muscles need time to recover. I used to overwork myself because I thought the more calories I burned, the better it would be. That paired with underfueling was not the best recipe to build muscle. I know what it feels like to want to just go all in all the time, work out every single day because rest feels like it's unproductive or that you are being lazy. Overtraining can increase your risk of injury. It can decrease your performance. It can weaken your immune system and it can impact your hormonal balance. When it comes to building muscle, rest is productive. Building part happens after the tear. Now, of course, we aim for at least seven to nine hours of quality sleep per night. During sleep is when your body repairs and builds those muscles. But aside from sleep, incorporating rest days are also important to prevent overtraining. You can spend your rest days going for a walk, doing some stretching, or just sipping some matcha and watching a good show. As somebody who has struggled with their relationship with food and their body, giving myself permission to rest is actually a whole other thing that I had to train. Hey! Hey! Building muscle takes time. It definitely does not happen overnight, although that would be great if it did. One of the biggest mistakes that we tend to make when we're trying to build muscle is that we focus on these small details hoping for big results, rather than focusing on the foundational routine that's going to help us progress from there. The people who see the most results are the ones who take their time with it. And as an impatient person right here, it sucks to hear. But there's really no way to speed up the process. And most of the time we focus so much on these little details, we overcomplicate it, we get so frustrated and then we give up. Being patient is the hardest part, but that's why it's important to set your goals for the week so that it can help you celebrate along the way. Now, I know that building muscle can seem like an intimidating process, but it's really about enjoying the journey and letting it be a way to enhance your life, not control it. You don't have to obsessively focus on building as much muscle as you can. Instead, you can apply some of the learnings that you had here into your routine to help support that goal. Taking care of your body is so much easier when you understand why you're doing things. So I hope this video helped you on your journey. Until the next video, you already know, you always deserve to eat. The video's over, but that doesn't mean you have to go. You can still subscribe or watch another video. Thanks for watching.